Hola, 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 buenos dias, good morning, beautiful planner babes, welcome back to the channel, it's your girl here, Daniela, la planning a diva, and I'm in my backyard, so you know what that means, it means it's time for a gardening planner plan with me and update, I've been really enjoying the way I've been structuring my gardening planner videos gardening plan with me's um i started one episode ago in this series that i'm calling urban farmer because i am an urban farmer i have my little garden um in the middle of the city i thought it would be really fun to give like a quick garden tour kind of take inventory take stock of everything that needs to be done in the garden with you all and then go on to do the plan with me. This way it's actually kind of helpful because I can go around, take notes, and I actually have my planner here with me. This is actually my household planner. I'm calling it my household planner. I have two planners in here. I have a the Winnie the Pooh um, True to You dashboard planner, which I'm going to start in July. And um that one's going to be like household chores. Right now, I'm, I'm actually pulled for an undated um, dashboard from my princess. Yes, Tiana, um, my princess planner um, to take me into July. So I'm using that one for June because the poo one doesn't start until July. But um, I also have a section um, in the back for my gardening section because my garden is pretty much you know part and parcel of my household and so this planner this little franken planner is going to be like my household my home and garden planner um i do have like a larger gardening planner where i keep all of the pages from previous seasons but that's in my crafting area so I have my gardening planner right here, and I just keep one season at a time in this um, Franken planner, as well as like notes that I've made of like seeds I've sowed. I also have my seed list in here, which I need to update. Um, but yeah, my gardening planner, love it. You'll see an up close and personal of this um, in the second half of the video where I'm actually flipping through this and planning out for the month of June. How I use this planner, I actually separate it by season. I don't use the dividers as months. I relabel them to be different seasons like spring, summer, fall, winter. And I actually use the undated um, gardening planner from the Happy Planner for my weekly. I actually use the undated vertically in a different way. I um, use a box per day. I used to call this my rolling monthly, but someone called it um, a box per day and I kind of like that better. So I use the box a day method. So each box in the vertical is corresponding to one day. So on a given weekly spread like this, you'll be looking at three weeks at a time. And I feel like that's perfect for gardening, which, you know, is on a bit of a slower time scale than regular life. Anyways, um, I'm going to flip to, let's see, the end of May, which I actually haven't really been in this planner for the end of May. I'm going to flip to the end of May, it's kind of blank, and I'll use this as a place to take notes, and it, that will prepare me for when I set up um, the month of June in this garden planner. So I'm going to turn the camera around and walk you through the garden, how it's going, Last time we sat together and talked about my garden, I was in the middle of the year, the great year week crisis of 2023. Since then, I have put in a lot of work and I've killed many earwigs and I am happy to report that we are, I think, pretty past the earwig scare. I do sometimes see earwigs here and there. I still go out at night and check my plants like um, right before I go to bed, like around 9 30, 10 p.m., I'll go out and I'll check to see if there are any earwigs on my plants. And sometimes I do find some earwigs. And I will link that previous video in the cards up above if you want to hear more about what I'm talking about. Basically, I had this um, crazy pest story where something was eating all of my plants in my garden, couldn't figure out what it was, eventually figured out it was earwigs. And I have since gone on an earwig massacre. But things are looking a lot better in the garden. And I'm excited to share with you how things are looking. So let's get into it. Okay, um, I'm not going to lie. My garden is pretty freaking messy. Um, 
right now my backyard is a bit of a mess I'm not gonna lie it's a little bit of a disaster zone right now um there are so many things that are kind of like unfinished projects and things i need to do and i'm just gonna give you a 360 view of like the disaster zone that is my backyard and my patio there's just like things laying around there's like just it's an absolute mess and um yeah, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> um, I guess let's start with the seedling table and then we'll move over to talk about the garden beds and then we'll finish with what the heck is going on in this patch of ground and then what the heck is going on in this patio section um, because there's a lot here that needs to be done. Okay. So let's move over here. Um, so this is my seedling table. This is my sprout table. This is where I sow all of my seeds into their little containers. And once they're ready to be transplanted, once they're big enough to be transplanted into the beds, that's what I go ahead and do once they're a little bit bigger. And um, there's a lot here that needs to be transplanted. Um, the beans are pretty much ready to be transplanted. Um, maybe a few more days. I'll give them a few more days, but then I need to transplant them. The squash, I think, really needs to be transplanted soon. So I have four squashes that need to be transplanted. Um, I have some tomatoes here. I think the tomatoes can wait. Um, this is a chocolate striped tomato. I've been better about labeling what, what the seeds are when I plant them or when I sow them and then what day I've sowed them. But something I need to do is I need to like de-weed. Um, see these little weeds that just like pop up out of nowhere? I need to de-weed. Um, slash I need to thin out some of these plants. So for example, this plant right here. It's a tomato plant, but um, I'm only trying to, you know, grow one per container because otherwise they're going to crowd each other. So I need to pull out, um, I need to thin out some of these guys and then make sure that there's nothing else growing in there. Um, opportunistic weeds like to land in there and take over the place and mooch off of the nutrients. So I need to just go through all of these and make sure that they're thinned, they're deweeded. I also need to start um, transplanting. I need to transplant the squash and I need to transplant the corn here. This corn is ready to be transplanted. Um, I think these marigolds are pretty much ready to be transplanted as well. And then some of these, uh, what is this? This is a watermelon. I think the watermelon should go into the ground soon as well. And that way um, I can give them their best shot. <gasps> oh my gosh, look y'all. It is my arch nemesis, the gopher, the gopher. <gasps> there he is. Oh my goodness. That is my arch nemesis. Oh my goodness. That is my rival. That is my sworn enemy. He's been eating all of my plants. Well, he's eaten, uh, recently he ate a cilantro and a sunflower, but it looks like he's into the mulberries. We have a mulberry tree right here, which I actually wanted to do something with those mulberries, but he looks like he's munching on the mulberries. What a loser. Oh, I hate him. Okay, anyways. Um, so I need to transplant some stuff here and also, um, I need to start sowing more seeds. So I have some containers here that I just transplanted a couple of squash yesterday, actually. So I need to fill these up and start sowing more seeds because it is a constant cycle of sowing seeds. Okay. Um, so this is a marigold. Super nice. This is another marigold. Oh, look, this is lettuce here. Lettuce. Amazing. Um, we have some more tomatoes over here. And uh, I need to figure out what to do with this stuff here. These cables and hoses and barbed wire. Um, all this came from the irrigation drip lines that my boyfriend set up in my beds, but we had to take them down because we had to take down the beds. Um, if you remember from my last episode in this series, we had to destroy and take down these garden beds because earwigs were living underneath them and also the soil was way too wet and so we needed to change the type of soil we were using. 
And so actually what we're going to do now is deconstruct these. My boyfriend's going to deconstruct these. And he's prepping another garden bed, which is going to be bigger. He's going to put a floor on it. And then he's going to put it on legs so that nothing can live underneath it. So that's the garden bed that he's making right now. So these are going to be deconstructed. Okay, moving on to the first garden bed here. Um, and actually... Things are okay in this garden bed. Um, a little bit of a mishmash of things. I have a pumpkin growing right here, and I'm a little worried that it's going to overtake these lilies, which I actually thought these were peonies um, in my last video, but they're actually lilies. And the lilies are looking pretty good. It looks like they might bloom soon here. So we have a big pumpkin. I don't know what's eating it. It might be the earwigs. I'm pretty sure it's the earwigs, but I haven't seen more damage or new damage beyond these first holes that I saw a couple of days ago. So I think that the earwig crisis is slowly passing, but I'm just gonna spray this down with neem oil. Um, well, I need to spray everything with neem oil, honestly, just to make sure it's not anything else that's eating this. This little squash or pumpkin or watermelon, I don't know what it is. It's not doing too well. I might just have to get rid of it, pluck it out, toss it. Um, same with this guy. I don't think that's doing too well. This squash or watermelon, I don't know what it is, or pumpkin, I'm not sure. Um, I'm usually pretty good about labeling what I'm sowing, but the first couple of months of the year were so hectic, I just kind of wasn't keeping track of things. This thing isn't doing too well either. It's kind of runty, so it might just end up dying at some point. We have two lettuce here. Um, they're looking kind of scraggly, not not gonna lie, but I'm letting them be and see if they end up getting a little bit stronger. And then my second garden bed here is the one that I probably have most of my plants in right now. Um, there are beans, so these are beans right here. This is a bean. Um, the beans are actually looking a lot better now that the earwigs aren't destroying them. We have a couple of lettuce here and there. The lettuce is kind of looking a little bit runty and raggedy over here, but I'm just going to let it be fertilizing them. Hopefully the start growing a little bit more. We have two tomatoes here and they got chewed on by the earwigs a while back and they've been really slow at, um, at getting back to it. So we'll see what happens with those. This bean is looking pretty healthy. I'm gonna have to start like putting some stakes down so that they can climb up the stakes. Um, what else? That's another healthy looking bean. The leeks are looking pretty healthy. This is my king leek right here. It's pretty big. I can't wait until it's ready to be harvested. And then we have a bunch of lettuce um, kind of here along the leeks. And the lettuce is actually starting to just get a little bigger and look good. So I'm very happy about that. But I am getting some damage from the earwigs. Um, I haven't gotten new damage. This is all like pretty old damage. So I'm hoping that the earwig crisis is over. And that is what's going on with this garden bed and then over here in this second garden bed in the back we have a couple of things little odds and ends we have a sage over here the earwigs were also damaging this one a lot and so it's kind of been struggling a little bit as you can see it's earwig damage this is a sunflower this is one of the two surviving sunflowers i have i used to have like 30 of these guys and then the earwigs absolutely demolish them and they're still trying to eat this sunflower but again this is all old damage i don't see any new damage so i'm hoping that you know the crisis is over we have a corn over here the corn is looking nice and healthy a sweet potato over there it's not looking the best but it was actually looking worse a week ago now it's looking a little bit better so we'll see a leek um, another corn we have a tomato over here this tomato has been very slow at growing but it's slowly starting to just grow more a little lettuce there um, we have another corn another corn another corn over here, another tomato, two leeks, and then a, a jalapeno in between them. But that jalapeno has not been growing at all. I don't know what's wrong with it. 
Um, we have two lettuce right here, um, kind of runty, a little flower right there. And then this is a strawberry. The strawberry hasn't been looking too good, honestly. It's been a little bit uh, runty and hasn't been growing very well. So I don't know what's going on with that one. This is a squash I just planted last night. I just transplanted it. I have planted them in little mounds like this because of the way um, the leaves are shaped and how the plant is shaped overall. It's kind of recommended to um, plant uh, big leaved plants like this, like um, squash and watermelon and uh, pumpkins, things like that in little mounds like that. So that's what I did and it looks very, very happy. I got to spray these with neem oil um, just so that, oh, there's Daisy, <laughs> just so that the leaves are protected. This is a basil that looks like it's been absolutely chewed. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. This thing looks so bad. I don't know if planting basils in the ground are is a feasible um, option. And then we have a little marigold here. This thing was chewed up by the earwigs, but it's slowly coming back. So I'm excited to see this thing continue to grow see all these new little buds here so that means that they're all growing flowers so i'm happy about that this one was also chewed up by the earwigs and then um but it, not as bad as the other one and it grew three more flowers on top of that damage and you can see here do you see that do you see this leaf right here this has been chewed by an earwig but again this is kind of old damage um i haven't seen new damage this is a basil. Uh, see, do you see what happens when I plant my basils in the ground? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think that's going to survive. And then this is kind of a new addition here. I just got this tomato cage. Oh, bugs. Hey, baby. There's bugs right there. This is a cucumber. And I just got this tomato cage. Um because it needs something to kind of climb on and it's looking pretty healthy. All this white powder, by the way, is diatomaceous earth. It's organic, it's food grade, it's what kills the earwigs. Um, it's a mechanical killer, so how it works, it slides in between like the plates of an earwig's um, armor exoskeleton and then it irritates them until you die. So we have a lot of flowers here. We also have a little bit of um, we have little cucumbers growing here as well. Let me see if I can find one. Oh, yeah, there we go. Do you see that? Okay, let me zoom in. See that cucumber right there? The little green one? So we are starting to see cucumber growing here. Okay, and then right next to the cucumber, we have two humongous tomato plants. And I forget uh, what kinds they are. Oh, this one is a cherry tomato. It's called Sweet million sweet million cherry tomato and then this one over here i think is just a beef steak or like a just like a regular roma tomato and then this tomato over here is smaller it's called husky red um we have the remnants of a little squash plant that the earwigs absolutely destroyed um okay but back to the tomatoes these tomatoes need to be trimmed i need to trim these tomatoes that's something that needs to be done. Um, I need to tie up some of these branches, tie them to the tomato cage so that they're not going all over the place. I need to trim some of this growth down, especially the growth down at the bottom so that um, we're not getting like soil bacteria and pests and diseases coming from the soil up onto the plant. That's a big thing in gardening. You don't really want anything touching the ground usually. You want to keep, keep all the foliage kind of clear of the ground especially since the ground gets wet when you water it. You don't want like, you know, that wet bacterial growth on your plant. And then something else that needs to be done is I need to buzz pollinate these flowers. So um, some plants like tomatoes are buzz pollinated, meaning that they don't release pollen unless they're um, subjected to a certain vibrational buzz, which is similar to a buzz that they'll experience by a natural pollinator like a bee or a fly. And so a trick that farmers do to increase their tomato yields is to buzz pollinate the plants themselves. And I was just watching a YouTube video where some guy was using an electric toothbrush to buzz pollinate his plants. So like this.
So I need to buzz pollinate all of the flowers on these tomatoes because I want all of my tomatoes to come out. I want tons of tomatoes. Okay, let me move over on this side. And actually, I just wanted to show you really quickly that it does seem like I'm getting some tomatoes already. You see those tomatoes? I'm starting to get tomatoes here. Very exciting. Okay. Okay, so those are the tomatoes. Um, and then the last thing in this patch or in this um, in-ground bed, I have a sage right there. Also got a lot of damage because of the earwigs, but it's starting to grow new leaves. So I'm hoping that it's going to um, do better. Look at that. Look at that damage. And then something that's exciting, some new additions to these garden beds. Um, these three pumpkins or squash, I forget exactly what they are. They're either pumpkins or squash, but um, I just planted these last night and in their little mounds and they look like they're doing really, really good. So this is the first one here. I need to spray neem oil on these plants because I just want to make sure that um, the leaves are healthy. These leaves look like they're, they've got some kind of like white disease on them. I'm not sure, but if we spray these with neem oil, hopefully... Um, the leaves will, you know, look better. They'll look like this, nice and green. Um, and I planted them with these rings of diatomaceous earth around them so that the earwigs would leave them alone. And it looks like no damage was made during the night. So I'm very, very happy about that. This one is the biggest one that I have. I'm really hoping that it's a pumpkin. We can see that it's starting to grow flowers as well. And I guess the last couple of things in this bed, um, we have a sunflower here. Again, one of my only surviving sunflowers. Look at the damage that the earwigs did on this one. Oh my goodness. But all of the new growth looks untouched. So again, this is old damage on these leaves. And then over here, we have some um, squash that the earwigs really did a number on. They munched on them and they just looked, they just looked like the, you know, um, got really, really damaged, and then they got uh, stunted, and now they're just like these runty little things. So I might just even like pull them out and like toss them because I don't think they're going to grow beyond that stage. Um, that's something that I need to do in the beds in general is like de-weed everything. There's a bunch of little weeds already growing in the beds. I need to get rid of that. Okay, what else? I need to clean up that hose and that bag of soil. I just did, I just was planting these um, squash last night, so I just left this trash here and I need to pick that up. I need to put this in the corner. This is a hose that actually was here when we moved in. I don't use it because it has holes in it, so I just want to wrap it up in like a nice tight loop and then put it in the corner over there where I keep all of my like random shit I don't use. Same with this thing here. I want to like move it over there into that corner. Okay, let's move over here. Um, these are my snake plants and aloe plants that I repotted a few weeks back. Um, they're not looking too good, honestly. They have a bunch of leaves, dry leaves in there from this tree that's always like dropping leaves. So I need to actually get in there, take out all of the um, leaves that fell into the pots, and then move these um plants like maybe um, underneath the porch over there somewhere where they're not getting a lot of sun. Okay, what else? What else? What else? Look at this mess right here. What a mess. I need to just organize this entire patio. I need to organize my gardening bench. Um, I need to throw away that bag. It's empty. Um, what else? I need to clean up this stuff right here. I just put this towel. I was cleaning my fish tank. I need to throw this towel in the laundry. Put this um, vacuum filtration cleaner back into my aquarium cabinet. Oh, something that I got at the store. I got this at Target. This is a clip set. I need to put these on all of my bags of dirt and fertilizer that I have over there. I have like tons of bags of like different things for gardening and they're all just open and that's been annoying me. And so I bought those clips to put on the bags. I need to 
go through my potted um, cactus and like clean out all the spider webs that kind of collect in the pots and amongst the paddles. What else? See, look at all that spider web. Um, what else? What else? I think that's about it. I just need to clean out some of these succulents. Oh, these are the aloes that I um, repotted. They're looking good. And that seems about it. I need to clear out that table right there. I just it, Usually we just use that table as like a thumping ground for things and it's such a mess. And hopefully my boyfriend can make this bed so that it can get out of the way. And that is pretty much what needs to happen in the garden. So I'm looking forward to all the transplanting I'm going to be, do, be doing. I think I'm going to try to do a couple of plants every night because it's a lot of plants I need to transplant. Okay, everyone, let's get into the crafting room and start the plan with me. Hola, hola, hello, I'm back. So I just filmed the garden tour. Well, actually, it's been a few hours since I filmed the garden tour because I actually had to start work. Um, but now I've wrapped up work and I am getting back into filming this gardening plan with me. So let's get into it. So this is my gardening planner, um, but I have like the current season in my household planner, my home and garden planner. Um, so I have a dashboard for my household in here, but I also have a section in the back for garden. So here's my garden section. And I just have my seed list in here and then some maps for the different seed kits I was sewing. And uh, look at this, so much fun with my gardening planner. But um, I separate my gardening planner by season. So instead of a divider like this corresponding to a month, it corresponds to a season. So this is spring 2023. And I don't really use the monthly for anything. I use it as a journaling space. Um, decorating space, journaling space, photos of my garden. I do really like this gardening projects section, but I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I like to use it. And then I use the weekly spreads. This is an undated planner. Um, it's the gardening planner, um, which is super nice because it has like these gardening to do's and trackers on the sidebar. But in terms of the days, I use this undated weekly um, situation in a different way. I've kind of adapted it to fit my needs. I basically use a box per day. So each box in the vertical columns corresponds to a particular day. And I try to keep the months kind of separate from each other. So here we have April starting on the 1st. Saturday, but I didn't, you know, use these boxes for March. And then similarly, um, the last couple of days in April down here, um, I just leave it blank because it allows me to have a little bit more room. So I keep the months kind of separate. And then we started May here. And actually, I haven't really done too much in the last couple of days of May. These are all the notes that I made after my gardening tour. But we're going to start the month of June here, and I believe it started on a Thursday this month. So we're going to start off numbering the boxes from 1 to 30, and I'll probably need another page. So I'll have to pull for that. Or actually, I just might split the month here because um, we are going into summer, and I think it'll end a little earlier. Like, I think this is going to go up to the 18th or something, but I can just start a new season so i think i'll do that so let us get into it okay let's move this out of the way for now i'm gonna start off with writing june with my unique alpha fonts i'll just pull from some stickers here um i think oh these are fun these like multicolored stickers right here so let's just spell out june and then i'm going to number all of the boxes so let me do that really quick. Probably we'll speed things up or just kind of flip the page and get to where we need to go. Okay, so I finished numbering the boxes, so 1 through 18. And then at this point, I think I'm going to pull for another divider. So let's get into my gardening planner here. 
and winter 2022 um so this one is the next one that i have coming up here so i'm just going to pull for the entire uh season and pop it into my home and garden planner for that and i will label the divider here and this is going to be summer 2023 what a cute divider i love this one this one is definitely from the undated gardening planner it has these beautiful gardening projects pages as well as the gardening trackers i love that and something i've been meaning to do for this planner is um label like the backs of these dividers i should just go ahead and do that right now so i'll pull for my mojo jojo black boxes and i'm gonna pop this one right here and then i need another one on this divider as well cover up this little bug here so this one was spring 23 and then summer 23 okay so like i said i don't use these monthly pages um as they're intended to be used i just use these as journaling pages um i like to like decorate with seed packets i finished stickers of course journaling a little bit washi tape so i'm gonna go ahead and do that at a later time i don't think i'm gonna do it right now i actually am waiting to go pick up some photos that i printed at my local cvs so once those are in hand i think i'll go ahead and journal here but we're gonna skip this for now oh you know what i should have done i should have written this list of to do's in this gardening projects section actually i might go ahead and do that right now because i want like a running list of things to do in the next couple of days slash weeks um yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and transcribe this in a much neater way over here into gardening projects so let's do that okay there we go i have organized everything that i need to do in this section and um, there are a couple of things i need to research i need to research about what's the best way to pollinate zucchini to maximize pollination um, I'm not sure if it's buzz pollinated. I don't think so. I think it's just brush pollinated. Not sure if people do that though. So I need to research on zucchini pollination strategies. I also need to research um, the best way to trim thyme. I have a thyme um, in a pot and I feel like it needs a good trim, but I'm a little scared to trim it. So I just need to research what's the best way to trim time and then this page i like using this section to keep track of seeds that i'm sowing and actually let me cover up the headers here i'm going to use my mojo jojo boxes to kind of create a new header here so let me go ahead and do that and i'll just use a little marker here to separate the boxes there you go and so these this first column is going to is going to be seeds sowed so the type of plant i'm sowing this is going to be the sow date the sprout date so when it first emerges the transplant date so when i transplant it into the ground the date it first flowers, the date fruit starts emerging, and harvest, and the death of the plant. The to-do list, um, here I'm just going to write down any to-dos that come up. I actually need to do an update of my seed inventory. I think that's it for now. And then this uh, box here, this is pest control this month. I'm still figuring out what I want to do in this box. I don't really need this box for pest control. I just do neem oil applications pretty consistently. And so I don't need this section for pest control, but I'll leave it like that for now. And then this um, section right here, this is for, I guess, plants I'm buying because it's date, plant type, budget, and spent. Again, not sure what I want to do here. Um, we're just going to leave it empty for now. But that is the gardening projects 
pages and then we can move into the second half of June here because we have the first half of June here and then we'll have the second half of June on these pages. So let me go ahead and again um, use sticker letters to write out June and then finish numbering the boxes. Okay, perfect. There we go. So we have 19th through the 30th and then um, June 1st through the 18th. So it's split across these dividers because that's the way the season falls. And I just realized that how I can use this section is to keep um, track of all of my garden expenses and when I um, purchase things because a garden is not cheap, y'all. It is not a cheap venture. I want to keep track of how much I'm spending on my garden. So for example, I went to Home Depot um, on the first, no, on the third, so six, three, and I bought diatomaceous earth. I bought a tomato cage. I bought gopher repellent and I bought wood stain for the raised bed that we're building. And this all cost money. So I can keep track of my garden expenses here. I like that. Okay, going back to the first couple of weeks in June. So this is the fun part because now we can start decorating and making it all cute. So. Of course, I'm going to start off with some washi tape because um, I'm trying to get through my washi tape, y'all. I just want to use washi tape as much as possible. So I have this really cute growing washi tape. There we go. Very cute. Perfect. I love it. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. And then I have this floral washi tape that would be perfect for the bottom here. I just want to use all the washi tape. It's such a good way to really liven up a page. Perfect. Ugh, I love it. Okay, I'm just going to fold it out like this and oh my goodness thank you thank you thank you amy mills thank you so much you are such a wonderful soul oh my goodness she gifted me a care package of sticker books and stickers and planner accessories and planner pages it was absolutely amazing we did a little exchange i sent her a planner cover and some planner pages and she gave me so many sticker books and stickers in return oh my goodness but she gave me this sticker book don't stop growing which oh my goodness i have been wanting a new gardening sticker book because i am on my last legs with the one that i have I barely have any pages left in it and I used up all the pretty stickers already so I'm so happy to have this fresh brand new don't drop don't stop growing sticker book so we're gonna dive right into this this is perfect 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 for my gardening planner okay so I don't even know where to begin everything is so cute I kind of want to add some of these full boxes in these um empty boxes here at the top so i'm thinking of adding like a full box up here beautiful and then maybe i'll add this little um journaling box right here i can just journal a little bit about what's going on in my garden i love it okay so i'm gonna try not to move this planner because when i'm zoomed in like this it's a little bit easy to get out of frame anyways uh, let's start with Okay, let's start off with doing a little bit of journaling about what I've been doing in my garden since the month started. So I actually did some work in the garden yesterday. I did a transplant. So yesterday was Monday. So I'm going to start off by uh, making a note of this. Transplanted four squash. Okay, there. I transplanted four of my squash slash pumpkins. I don't know what they are, honestly. Um, the first batch of seeds that I sowed earlier in the year, I did not keep good track of the records of 
what I sowed. And so a lot of these plants are mystery plants. I mean, squash plants, pumpkin plants, gourd plants in general, they just have a very similar look. But we shall see once they start, you know, flowering and producing fruit. And something cool about this transplant, I actually used this mound method for the first time. It's something I've definitely been aware of, but I never, you know, did it myself. Basically, um, when you're planting um, squash plants or gourd plants like watermelon, pumpkin, squash, and you have a pretty, you know, hefty transplant and i did I, the squash plant was maybe like this big or so when i transplanted it i didn't transplant it directly into the ground i created these little mounds of dirt and then i planted it within the mound so that way the way the leaves are shaped and kind of spill over the sides of the plant that way the leaves aren't really hitting the ground too much but I think it turned out really, really good. And I'm happy that I did that. And I'm going to be using this mound method for planting my squash and gourds from now on. And I'm going to grab this plan the garden sticker for today. Today is Wednesday. And I just realized that I transplanted on the 6th, not the 5th. Oops. I filmed episode 2 of uh, Urban Farmer. And I'm going to sow some seeds today, so I'm going to put a sticker that says start seedlings. And then I'm going to make a list of the seeds that I sow here. And then on Sunday, I fertilized my plants with my aquarium water. I have two aquariums and I do water changes. And aquarium water is like amazing fertilizer because... Um, of all the nitrogen and ammonia in it. It's super, super good for plants. And so I did a water change and I fertilized my plants. So I'm gonna make a note of that here on Sunday. Okay, and I really like this watering can with the flowers in it. So I'm gonna pull for this and pop it down here on the first. Maybe have a little butterfly flying around so cute i love that okay and then what else do i want to do i'm gonna grab um this little sticker that says nature doesn't hurry and i'm gonna put it right there and i'm gonna make a note of that i need to build um i need to build the fifth garden bed. So I'm going to give myself two tasks for the garden today, Wednesday, sowing seeds and building the fifth garden bed. And this is going to be the in-ground garden bed, so it's not going to be too intensive. I just, it's almost already done. I just kind of need to build, I mean, dig out like a little bit of kind of small shallow ditches to place these like long marble panels that we found in the back of the house we're going to use those as garden in ground garden bed um walls it'll make more sense when i show you in my next um, gardening vlog but i need to do that today and i'm going to sow seeds today as well i also want to spray neem oil on my plants today so i'm going to make that um, a to do here let me see if i can find um a spray plants check for pests i guess i could use this flag that says check for pests i'm gonna put this one right here i'm gonna put um, neem oil application there we go i'll leave this section for sowing the seeds so i'm giving myself three tasks in the garden today sowing seeds neem oil application and building the fifth garden bed which doesn't isn't going to be as intense as it sounds and then for the remainder of the week um tomorrow thursday or friday i'll see what day works best for me but i'm going to transplant um more squash the corn and the beans and then on Friday, I'm going to do the buzz pollination, the tomatoes. And on the weekend, I will try to get to some of these other tasks um, that I outlined here in the gardening projects um, page. Like I'll get to some of these tasks here. We'll see. 
Yay, amazing. I love it. Oh, I love this gardening sticker book so much. It's amazing. I also have my botanist sticker anthology that I like to pull for. Um, for this gardening planner, I always try to pull for some of these stickers. Let's see. Ooh, these look fun. I'll pull for this one. Put that there. And then maybe this one. Put this one right there. Maybe sprinkle some bugs throughout. Another butterfly over here, or a moth. Okay, I think that's good for now. Um, I guess the last thing that I will do is add some more washi tape on the top and bottom of these pages right here. Oops, I covered up June. And then let me add a big flower, like right here. Let's see, ooh, mushrooms. Ooh, I like this one. I want to use this yellow page up though. Let's pull for this large flower right here. I don't know what type of flower this is, but it looks very cool. Perfect. Have a little bee just flying around. The little beetle right here. I love it. Okay, I'm going to leave it like this because I want to leave room for myself to add tasks and journal and what have you. But that is my gardening planner plan with me. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. Let me know what's growing in your garden. And with that, I hope to see you in my next video. So until then, stay safe, stay blessed. Have a wonderful time playing in your planners this week. Don't forget to stay hydrated and happy planning. Adios.